Trey Yinks leads our coverage live from Kiev. Trey. Yeah, absolutely. The Ukrainians are hoping that ceasefire in the south holds so they can get those civilians out of the line of fire. A similar concern in another southern city of Odessa. Today, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warning that the Russians plan to target this city and then ultimately try to take it. Over the past 24 hours, Zelensky has been speaking with world leaders and politicians trying to garner support for the situation on the ground. Yesterday, he spoke with lawmakers over Zoom. And he also spoke with President Biden. It comes as civilians here in the capital of Kiev are lining up. They are volunteering to fight. They understand that Russian forces are getting closer and closer. It's not just this capital city that's concerned. Neighboring Poland is requesting 40,000 NATO troops. They are worried that if this expands, Putin may try to take territory there. We do know Secretary of State Antony Blinken in Moldova today speaking about this issue. He had this to say about the possibility of fighter jets being supplied to the Polish if they supply them to the Ukrainians. We're looking actively now uh, at the question of uh, airplanes that Poland uh, may provide uh, to, uh, to Ukraine. Can't speak to a timeline, but I can just tell you we're looking at it very, very actively. Fighting continues outside the city of Kyiv today. There are new reports in local media that three civilians were killed in an area called Irpin. We were there yesterday, and there were civilians trying to get out of the way as Russian forces fired mortars into this area. This is significant because it just gives you a taste of what the civilian population across this country is facing. Listen to how one uh, woman described it to me as we spoke yesterday. It's a war. It's a real war. Do you hear the real war? We smell it. You can feel it. And uh, of course, it's, it's fear. More peace talks are set to take place tomorrow between the Russians and Ukrainians. But there are no expected developments to come out of these conversations. Ukraine wants something that Russia does not. Ukraine wants sovereignty and they want their borders to be respected. And as we've seen over the past 10 days, Russian forces have no intention of doing that. And back to you. Trey, who is uh, sort of moderating this negotiation or these peace talks? I know that you don't you don't think there's a lot of hope for them, um, but who's moderating that and who's in charge? Yeah, so right now the talks are taking place directly between the Russian and Ukrainian delegation. As for a larger peace conversation, it's part of what the Israelis actually today are doing. Over the past 24 hours, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett spoke three times with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He also met with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. So there's clearly something behind the scenes going on, trying to get together some sort of ceasefire deal to slow the fighting and stop the civilian casualties from rising. As for the talks tomorrow, though, they will take place face to face between the Russian and Ukrainian delegations. Trey, you mentioned the increased bombing of, of larger cities. We know Kharkiv has been under siege, Mariupol, potentially Odessa. Here in the capital city of, of Kiev, we know there have been uh, sirens going off there. But there are prominent historic buildings, you know, government buildings, religious buildings. Have they taken to shelling the middle, the city center of Kiev, uh, Kiev at all? Have they done that at all? Or have they, and if they haven't, is it the sense that they're leaving that out of bounds for now? Earlier in the week, they hit the city center with Russian missiles, and they hit an apartment building, also a television tower, killing multiple civilians in these strikes. We've seen more devastating images in other population centers across this country, but there is really nothing off limits for the Russians. And U.S. intelligence analysts worry that that will be the playbook of President Putin in the coming days, to hammer this city from the ground and air as Russian forces move in. We have seen this playbook uh, in places like Syria, for example, where the Russians will hit a populated area, try to push the civilians out, and then move their ground forces in. It's part of what we're seeing in Kharkiv in the northwestern part of this country and also in Mariupol in the south. All right, Trey Yinks, live from Kiev this morning. Thank you so much, Trey.